A big hello to everybody. How are you doing? My name's Mark and welcome to the Sim Hanger. And today we're going to be looking at an application for Microsoft Flight Simulator that's got me excited. It's Sim EFB, Electronic Flight Bag, allowing for a simple and easy way to collate flight data information. But originally conceived and designed for VR use, but equally usable in 2D mode. Using a partly automated process, it has a number of different possible functions, from the creation of flight plans to the semi-automated process of collating data for that flight plan and the storage of maps, charts and so on. A simple, crisp interface with a short learning curve. Information is stored and linked not only to flight plans but to the airports as well, so when you use that airport again, that information's ready and waiting for you. The program's only recently released and I've been giving it a test and trial for the last two weeks, so let's get started. I'll leave a link to the SimEFB website in the notes below this video. There you'll find additional information as well as a number of useful instructional tutorials. The product is currently for sale from Aerosoft, Just Flight and SimMarket. The price is just under £25 or just under €30. Euros. We'll run through the main features of this software shortly, but what's the main attraction? In a nutshell, it provides the information that you've chosen in the cockpit whilst you fly. Be you an airliner aviator doing a long haul, a multi-leg bush trip, or you're following an instructional video you want to make your own notes as a guide and reminder in something like FS Academy's VFR and IFR training packages or any other instructional video or training package that you're doing. SimFB could be an invaluable aid. I'm not going to run over the install process. It's simple, it's a fairly small program and it puts panel 1, 2 and 3 in your community folder. The way the panels work is they're incorporated into the in-flight menu bar. Each panel individually selectable. One clever feature of this software is almost any map can be made a moving map. When the program initially loads up, you'll be presented with a view similar to this. It comes pre-installed with one category and a number of demo flight plans. You can of course create your own categories and flight plans, and we'll be doing that shortly. You can also directly import any .pln file, and in an upcoming update to SimEFB, you'll be able to import Sky Vector flight plans. Using an online database, the program will auto-fill in as many details as it can. You can, of course, edit, subtract, and add additional information. This information is distributed across the three panels that are available in SIM, with panel 1 being ideal for text, and panels 2 and 3 for maps and charts and so on. Although in my testing, it's interchangeable. The right-hand half of the interface is where you will add maps and other data. There's a menu bar at the top and if we click on Auctions, we can view Flight Plan and Airports folder. This is where SimEFB stores the information that you create. Also under the Options is Settings. The first tab covers your comms port as it accesses the internet for information. The second tab is the default searches to help you find the information you want. And there's also a bespoke search function if there's a particular site you like to get your information from. Most of the other aspects we'll cover as we go. Let's start off by creating a new category. We click on the Add button. We may want categories to divide our flights up into, say, bush flights, long-haul flights, and so on. I'm going to create a new category called Europe Flights. Once done, hit OK. There are obviously no flight plans under the new category yet. We now have the option to create a flight plan from scratch or import a flight plan. If we wanted to start afresh, then we'd hit the Add button under Flight Plans. And here we get the option to add in our departure and arrival airports as well as any brief descriptions. You can, if you want to, define a prefix number, ideal for different legs of bush trips and so on. But for this review, I'm going to import a flight plan directly from Microsoft Flight Simulator. For simplicity, we'll create a flight plan from scratch quickly. My departure airport is Jersey, Echo Golf Juliet Juliet, and I'm departing runway 26. It's only going to be a short flight for demonstration purposes. We'll depart Jersey, we'll fly over Guernsey, the VOR, and then on to Alderney. Now I'll be using JustFlight's Pipe Arrow. To make planning easier, I'll just open the filters 
and I'll go down to the nav aids and switch those on. That'll bring up the NDB and VORs. And I'll also turn on the fix and R nav positions. You can see it populating itself on the map. That's all we need. Now we can carry on with our flight plan. Let's now select our arrival airport and that is Echo Golf Juliet Alpha Alderney. And now what we'll want to do is add in a few waypoints. The reason I'm picking a number of waypoints is to highlight the versatility of SIM EFB. There's a waypoint there just off the island that will be fine. Juliet Juliet Mike 03, I'll add that. I'm going to add the Guernsey VOR, that's it there. And left click add. And lastly, we'll pick a waypoint just before Aldney. Brill is about the closest, so we'll choose that one. That's our flight plan complete. So we'll be flying from Jersey to a waypoint, then on to Guernsey VOR, then to a waypoint, and then for our landing in Aldney. Clicking on the menu on the left hand side, it brings up the option to import a current FS2020 flight plan. Note that SIM EFB and Microsoft Flight Simulator need to be running simultaneously. I could just import a .pln file, but in this case I've loaded a flight plan, so I'll import that. But let's take a look at what just happened. Based on the flight plan, SIM EFB has populated the departures, flight plan and arrival tabs with relevant information from its online database. For arrival and departure airports, we've got the airport information and elevation. We've got comms information, as well as details on each runway. For the flight plan, providing all the points are in the database, and most are, it has populated that as well. Here we can see it's picked up the various waypoints and the VOR over Guernsey. This has been done automatically and a great reference during our flight. Also note, it's captured the flight level information, suggested flight levels for each point, and in addition, it's shown the distance between the various waypoints. Whilst the automated information is very useful, we may need more information and some charts and maps. Each section, departure, flight plan and arrivals can have up to 100 entries. We'll start with departures, as each search is specific to the tab that you're on. To do this on the right hand side, we click on search and it automatically opens your browser. And it's opened up four tabs at the top, which are the four default searches specified in the settings we looked at earlier. You're in no way restricted to these, but it's a start to find the information you're looking for. So to start off with, I think I'll get an aerial view of Jersey Airport. I bring up SIM EFB just to check. I'm on D01 and I am on the Departures tab. So that's all good. Now back to my aerial shot. I'm just going to zoom in so I can get a bit more detail. That looks about right. Now ready to add this to my electronic flight bag. Bring up my EFB and click on grab and it creates this green rectangle. Using my mouse I can now drag and resize the green rectangle to my choice. That looks about right. So I'll hit enter to capture the information within the highlighted area. I can give it whatever name I want but I'll just choose one of the defaults aerial and there it is captured. If I click on it, I can enlarge it. Note all charts and maps need to be north orientated. I'm not going to make this one a moving map, although I could. That looks fine. Let's move on and get some more information for our flight bag and for our flight plan. By doing that, I click on the next item, D02. I don't need search again as I'm still after information on Jersey. I'll choose another tab. This time I will go to Sky Vector. There's a sectional map there that may be useful. Note the flight plan there has been put in manually by myself. It wasn't needed, I just did it for my own reference. We'll see why later on. A future update of SIMEFB will in fact be able to draw in flight plans. Once again I've hit grab, I've got my rectangle, get it over, that size looks about right, hit enter and I will just use sectional as the heading and there it is, captured. I'd also like more details on the departure airport. So using one of the other tabs, I can search for information. In this particular case, I've chosen a VATSIM website. They're renowned for their excellent information for UK based airports. So let's see if we can find some information. Aerodrome chart, that's going to do fine. That looks great. That should give me all the information that I need. 
the site has option just to rotate that looks better now bring up sim efb and click on the grab button again i've got the green triangle and i'll now capture this that's done I now have an aerial, sectional and airport information for my flight. I could of course continue and add further information. I've now moved over to my flight plan tab. I could do a separate search but I can find the information with the search as it is and that is my flight shown on Sky Vector. So following the normal process I'm going to capture my complete flight plan and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to make it a moving map. So when I refer to it in sim, I'm able to see the aircraft position on that particular map. And note you can do this on any map or chart. That's the versatility of sim EFB. I've renamed this flight plan route and there it is. Now to make it a moving map, I click on it to enlarge it. To set any map or chart as a moving map, you need to set two points on that particular map or chart. So on the right hand side I'm going to click on the first set and the database brings up a list of options that are available. One is Jersey Airport Reference Point. So I've chosen that and then I'm going to click on it over the map. There we are. It now knows where Jersey is. I now need to choose a second point and I'm going to choose the point for our destination at Alderney. Two points set. We're done. Click on finished. Note it's highlighted in green markers are the reference points. Any map that has been configured as a moving map is highlighted with a small m. So you know that that's a moving map. Following the same process I can now go ahead and capture further information. For my flight plan and my arrival, my destination. I've now got all the information and images I require. I'm ready to fly. To do so, you click on the Publish button. A reminder here that the information is stored by airport, so any future flight plans with that particular airport included will include that information. A very handy feature. At the bottom of this pop-up panel, you have three publishing options. To FS2020 means that these panels will be visible in 2D mode. The second option is for VR obviously. And the third option is if you want it on separate panel, perhaps on a separate monitor and not display within the sim itself. Okay, we're done. Let's minimize EFB and let's go fly. By going up to the toolbar, we can see the three panels shown as EFB 1, 2 and 3. By clicking on the respective panel, we can activate it and bring it up. You can also resize any of the panels to suit. And here we see that it contains the information we saw within our flight plan. The information for departures first, then the flight plan, and then the arrival. And at the bottom is a schedule of all the various maps. We can choose how many panels we wish to display at any given time. Note the default view for panel 2 and 3 is orientated towards the maps, although you can display text information on these panels if you want. By default, each of these panels contains a moving map courtesy of Open Maps. I've opened that on EFB2. This moving map will be available for all flights. And on EFB3, I think I'll bring up a sectional map. Panels 2 and 3 have a menu at the top. By clicking on the M, it will automatically set the most appropriate map it thinks you need, depending on your progress in the flight plan. The next icon displays a menu of various maps available. The plus and minuses are zoom, although you can use the wheel on your mouse. And by left clicking, you can drag maps around within the panels. And the last icon will return the panel to default view. We'll just take a quick flight so that we can demonstrate the moving maps. Panel 3 is on the world map and we can see our progress down the runway. 
Panel 2 is the sectional chart and that's not designated as a moving map so it's a static display. I've now switched Panel 2 to our flight plan route which we had already configured as a moving map and because we set two points it knows exactly where we are on that map. Turning our attention to Panel 3 using the mouse scroll wheel I'm able to zoom in and out. On all maps note it will always try and center the aircraft. Whilst in flight you can change any of the displays in any of the panels. I've got a moving map in panel 2 and we're on our way to Guernsey. So let's have a look at an aerial map of Guernsey itself and the airport. And once again I can zoom to suit. You also have the option to minimize the various panels. But for now let's give it a go in VR. To change a view to VR you need to restart your flight and publish to VR. That's done, let's go fly. Remember to keep SimEFB running in the background. We're now in VR and I've activated the menu and we can see the EFB panels 1, 2 and 3 shown separately. Let's initially have a look at panel 1. By clicking on the top grey bar and holding down the mouse key you can move and reposition the window to wherever you want it. Release the mouse button and the window stays in position. And here once again we can see all the various text and information. I'm in a Reverb G1 and it's perfectly readable. Now, as mentioned before, the panels are resizable to suit. You can change both the length and the width. So if you're struggling to see the panel details, just increase the panel size. Let's close panel 1 and have a look at panel 2. Left click with the mouse to activate. And then drag and drop into the position which suits you best. I'm going to display a map and I'm going to click on the M for Auto Display Best Map. And it brings up the sectional chart with our flight plan on it. And as we could in 2D mode we can zoom in and out using the mouse scroll wheel or you can use the plus and minus buttons above. I've placed panel 2 and 3 right in front of me and we'll take off from Jersey. Panel 3 is showing the world map and panel 2 is showing our flight plan which we designated as a moving map and we should be able to see movement on both maps. Whoops, watch where you're going. Let's try and stay on the runway, too busy looking at the maps. While we're up, let's hold runway heading. We can see the aircraft moving down on the world map on panel number three. We can now zoom in and out to suit on any one of the panels and in addition, we're free to place them anywhere in the cockpit that we wish. You can't see my instruments so let's just move these panels over by the seat. And there they'll be ideally placed if I need to just take a quick glance and look at them. There we go, I think that will do. If at any time you don't want to close the panels you do have a way of collapsing them. And that's by hitting the minimize icon. This will allow you to have all three panels readily at hand but without taking much of your viewing area. And even if they're collapsed, well, they're completely movable and you can have them wherever you wish. Whether you're in 2D or 3D mode, this seems to have next to no impact on frame rates at all. Well, that's my overview on SIMEFB, the electronic flight bag. And so, what are my final views and opinions? The software is not without the occasional bug or glitch, but the developer, Sam Smith, is actively developing and improving this almost on a daily basis. I've had it for two weeks and the improvements just in those two weeks are significant. I also initially felt it was overpriced, but the more I've been using it, the more I realize just how much has gone into this package. For flight training purposes and VR, well, this is highly recommended. This is going to be a regular companion for me on my bush trips and the occasional long haul. One of the big bonuses is the fact that all the information that you collate for an airport will be there for any time you use that airport in a future flight plan, saving a whole lot of time in the future. And it's relatively easy to use. For VR, there's no equal at this time. Is the EFB something you'll use? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care, look after yourselves and bye for now.